What's up guys and welcome to this new series The DIYs? Uh, no The revamp of French Guy Tries? Uh, no Oh, then the vlogs and outdoor videos No Then that's your project of putting science and magic back? I never do what I say No, that's a completely brand new series and all those things will come One day Probably No, it's a brand new concept that I found five seconds ago, where I'm going to vulgarize history, mythology, science, math and... Yeah, we might not go that far though. And it's called... I actually didn't have time to think of a name. So you know what? Give me names for this playlist in the comments below and I'm going to select one. Because you're worth it. So to start this concept, I had to hit hard! Ouch. Like when I pound your si- <clears throat> What? So yes, I have to hit hard! So it became crystal clear that I had to start with the myth of Perseus because of absolutely no reason. So here's the myth of Perseus for dummies! I'll probably get a copyright strike for that, but oh well. I hope you'll enjoy! So to talk about Perseus, we firstly need to start from the start which is before he was born. So it starts when Acritius, king of Argos, and his wife Eurydice... No, not the Orpheus one, another one. But you know, at that time, Eurydice was quite popular. If you had a girl, she was named either Eurydice or Cassiopeia. So that was like the Sophia and Emma of our time. So they had a daughter called Danae, but they wanted a son who could succeed to the throne. Because women couldn't. Sexism! So to know if they'd be able to have one, they went to see the Oracle of Delphi. Who was the best of the best, the cream of the cream. I mean, that was the Oracle who predicted the death of everyone. And they still thought it was a good idea to go see him. So they went there, super chill with their horses. Hello! Will we have a song? So as usual, when someone is coming to see this oracle, they got the answer they were looking for. Your grandson is going to kill you. Okay, bye! So the king was a bit disturbed about the news and was like, but what about my son? And the oracle said, So they returned to Argos and fearing that the prophecy would be right, because you know, ancient Greece, it's not like destiny was written, but Oh wait, <laughs> it was. He still tried, so kudos for trying. Well, the way he did that wasn't... Well, it was a little bit borderline. As he kinda locked his only daughter into a bronze chamber so that she will never see any man. Or anyone else for that matter. But I mean, sequestration isn't that bad in the end. I mean, we're still doing that nowadays, and uh, it's not much of a big deal. It even creates happy families! A bit consanguine, I must concede, but... Uh, so Acritius was like super happy because he fucked the prophecy in the ass! What? That's not rude. That was considered normal at that time. Because yes, despite being almost 3000 years old and everyone doing parasites, infanticides, incestuous relationships, pedophilia, bestiality, they were more advanced in respect than we are nowadays. For them, being bisexual was the normal way of being. It was actually weird to not have homosexual relationships. Boom! Straight in your lack of respect towards the LGBTQ plus community. Anyway, he was super happy, his daughter was sequestrated, he would leave, easy dazzy fuzzy, until Zeus came in. And Zeus fell in love with her. Just like with 99.9% .9 of the women of the Greek mythology. What can I say? He was a sensitive guy. Probably French too, if you see what I mean. <laughs> so Zeus entered the chamber as a golden rain, which makes the golden shower to an all new level of weirdness. And then made love to her, staying in the form of the rain, which gives an all new sense to being wet for a girl. After some point, Acritius heard the baby crying. Yeah, the baby came like super fast, but I mean, that was God juice. That shit's powerful. So when he heard the cries, he realized that he had a grandson, and that was the prophecy who put it in his ass. So he thought about killing the baby first, but you know, he wasn't that crazy. I mean, he just sequestrated his daughter. He wasn't crazy. I told you, that's something normal at that time. 
So yeah, he wasn't crazy enough to kill the son of Zeus. So instead, he went for something much lighter. He banished his daughter and grandson into a wooden chest that he drowned into the sea. What? But Zeus saw that and asked Poseidon to calm the seas, which he did in one sentence. Tu te calme, Michel! And thanks to that, both the mother and son served safe to the island of Seriphos. And that's basically how Perseus was born! How cool is that? Not for the mother. So then, obviously, Perseus grew as a young man. Because that's what you usually do when you're born as a man and you're alive. At the same time, Polydectus, the king of Seriphos, fell in... Yeah, yeah, the king, because, you know, at that time there were not that many people, so when you were born you were either a king, a hero, uh, or dead. So Polydectus fell in love with her and asked her to marry him, but she didn't want to. And you know, because we were in ancient Greece, uh, that was impossible that she didn't want to. That must have been because of Perseus, because <laughs> logic. So Polydectus thought about a master plan to get rid of Perseus. And he dared Perseus to go kill the Gorgon, Medusa. So if you don't know, Medusa was a female monster with snake as hair. If you're still unable to picture her, she was basically looking like any girl in the morning without makeup. Proppy sexist joke, done. So Perseus said, okay, I'm going to kill Medusa, because you know what? I'm the son of Zeus! Which Polydectus didn't know. <laughs> so... I'm pretty sure that if he knew that, he would have, like, tried something else, but, oh well, too late. And so Perseus, as son of Zeus, was loved by all the gods. So basically, all the gods came to him and was like, you know what, killing Medusa will be super hard, so we'll do something for you and give you all our best tools so you will kill her like piece of cake. That, my friends, is the example of starting life in easy mode. So Athena gave him an invisibility cloak and a mirror shield, and her Hermes gave him uh, a basic sword and sandals. <clears throat> well, you know, recession, all the gods were not equal in front of it. And with that, Perseus went to go kill Medusa, and he walked again. And again, until he realized that he had no bloody idea where she was living. So instead, he went to see the Grey, uh, the Grey, the, well, the Grey Sisters. We still have no bloody idea how he knew where those were living, but pff, you know, <laughs> fuck logic. So the Grey Sisters, Dano, Enio, and Pemfredo were three sisters who shared one eye and one tooth. And they were also the sister of the Gorgons, like Medusa. Perseus, who's a jerk, went there silently, waiting for them to exchange their tooth and uh, to steal them. And use them as a ransom to know where the Gorgons were living. And at that point there are two different versions of the myth. The first one shows that Perseus was just a douchebag. So he stole that, got the information, and get it back. And then there's the second version that shows him as a real dickhead. Because after getting the information, instead of getting the tooth and the eye back, he threw them in a lake, leaving uh, the Grey Sisters unable to eat and blind. How cool is that? That's a great hero! So after that, he went in Africa to find Medusa and kill her! Oh, one thing I forgot to tell is that Medusa had the power to petrify anyone who was looking at her. Perseus went there with the invisibility cloak and uh, the sandals, woohoo! Uh, and he used the mirror shield to see Medusa in the reflection, because yes, those power didn't work with the reflection, because... Fuck logic! And as a true hero, he beheaded her and took her head as a trophy that he put in a bag. You know, to not, uh, oh! So after that, he started his journey back to Seriphos, which seems quite easy, but you know, Greek mythology, so... So while Perseus was returning to Seriphos, he firstly encountered the Titan Atlas. Atlas was like a mythical giant, like that was the big deal. He was a titan that was supposed to hold the sky for eternity. 
So he was quite an important guy and when Perseus arrived he told Atlas that he was seeking for hospitality as son of Zeus. But the thing is Atlas who also had a prophecy because I guess he went to see an oracle also <laughs> knew that a son of a god would come to steal his golden apples. And he wasn't ready for that because you know golden apples uh, quite expensive, so he looked at Perseus and said, no. To which Perseus said, okay, look. And Atlas, what? <clears throat> and that's pretty much the end of the story between Atlas and Perseus, which basically makes no sense at all when you think about it, because the prophecy wasn't talking about him, but about Hercules, who's supposed to come afterwards. So, if Atlas is already dead, transformed into a stone statue, how does Hercules is supposed to encounter him to steal the golden apples? Fuck logic! Anyway, after that, Perseus is going on his way back to Seriphos until he found Andromeda, a beautiful maiden chained to a rock waiting for a sea monster to eat her. How convenient is that? And that's why I love mythology! Everything is written and the hero will always have the girl of his dream. Can you imagine if life was like that? That means that instead of being forever alone, you would have a chance in life. I mean, wouldn't that be crazy? So yeah, he found Andromeda, saved her from the sea monster and... Oh, <laughs> I forgot to say, so Andromeda was the daughter of Cepheus, the king of Ethiopia, because... <laughs> once again... And also daughter of Cassiopeia! Yes, I told you, either Eurydice or Cassiopeia. That's like... And of course, they both fell in love, but Andromeda was already promised to someone, so Perseus solved the problem. <laughs> they got married and returned to Seriphos. <laughs> and when they arrived in Seriphos, what happened? Exactly! <laughs> Indeed, Polydectus was still trying to marry his unwilling mother, so he transformed him into stone. And now you might say, but Ernest, it looks like you kind of finished the circle, but what about his father? And that's because the circle's not done! After killing this king, he returned to Argos, because... No reason! Like seriously, he knew about the prophecy, and he didn't want to kill his grandfather, so... Why returning to Argos? He would have stayed in Seraphos and everything would have been perfect. But no, I said, let's return there. And so they all returned to Argos. And there, nothing happened. Until he went to a sporting event. And you know, our hero that was like so precise. I mean, he was able to kill Medusa without even looking at herself. He was looking at the reflection and was able to slice her throat backwards. Well, I guess it was just luck because during the competition he sent a discus that went straight into his grandfather and killed him instantly. Yeah! And that's it! He fulfilled his destiny by killing his grandfather! So in the end, what's the moral of the story? What can you remember out of that? If you have any troubles... <laughs> and this is the end of the myth of Perseus. I hope you liked the video. And no, I didn't forget to record the ending yesterday night. Uh, if you did, don't forget to put a thumbs up, share the video, subscribe to my channel, go follow me on all my social medias to select which story you want me to cover next. You can also support me on Patreon because the Patreon guys told me to say it at the end of the videos. And no matter what happens, I will see you in my next video. Have an amazing, wonderful day. Don't forget to smile and bye-bye.